Bag. But when a span clamp is used, careful workmanship will help to prevent drop wire troubles at this point. So let's see how Ted handles this situation. The job is started at the house as before. Enough wire has been removed from the reel so that there is no drag on the wire as he climbs. The attachment is placed and the drop wire attached. The wire is formed with smooth bends and all attachments are made carefully to avoid damaging the wire. Ted's next step is to move his reel and ladder to the span clamp location. He moves the reel first and places it temporarily on the house side of the sidewalk to leave an unobstructed passage. He makes sure the wire rests flat on the ground. Now for the ladder. But first, Ted rearranges the drop wire to clear the shrubbery so that later he'll be able to raise the wire without damaging the plantings. Ted moves his ladder last so that during the short period it must be left unattended, it will be safe from passing traffic and pedestrians. He places the ladder on the field side to keep it out of the street and make sure that it will not interfere with pedestrian traffic. For the first thought of every telephone man should be that every part of the job is done safely. Ted will use his hand line again on this job. But this time he will throw it over the strand so that he can do as much work as possible before climbing the ladder. Excess length is removed from the portion toward the house so that later the drop wire can be attached to it and raised quickly. Now the reel is brought across the sidewalk and placed in a stable position. The hand line is tied around the wire in a loop. After winding any excess wire back on the reel and adjusting the brake, Ted can pull up the wire and make the hand line fast to the ladder. Ted's first job on the ladder is to lash it securely to the strand to prevent it sliding sideways or being pulled over while he's working aloft. As soon as the weight of ladder and installer is displacing the strand toward the street. So Ted provides the minimum required amount of sag, knowing that when he descends and removes the ladder, the strand will swing back toward the house. This added sag will help to prevent trouble in the drop. In this case, there's no problem of clearance. Now Ted removes the hand line and places the wire in the drop wire clamp toward the terminal pole. It is formed in a smooth curve between the two clamps to avoid wire damage. The next step in this job will be at the terminal pole, so the ladder is returned to the truck. The hand line will be used again to raise the wire at the pole. It's the safest way, and Ted will be able to determine more accurately the wire needed for connection in the terminal.
the drive hook to all points where troubles are most likely to occur. Various operations on this job were similar to those on job one, the wire run on the building and the work on the pole. But when a span clamp is necessary, Ted recognizes that care must be used. The benefit of a smooth curve between the clamps. The value of running the drop beneath the strand and cable to avoid abrasion. And the importance of allowing for strand displacement when determining the sag. Throughout the entire job, Ted has planned each operation and used the careful workmanship that ensures safety and trouble-free service. Job three involves running a drop wire from the customer's premises directly to a terminal pole across the street. The first thing Ted does when he arrives on the job is to check traffic, tree interference, power wires, and other conditions to be sure that he can safely place the wire across the street without assistance. The first part of this job is done exactly as jobs one and two. The first building attachment is placed at a height that will give the drop standard clearance over the street and proper sag. So let's pick up this job as Ted completes his work at the house and returns his ladder to the truck. The drop wire reel is back at the house out of the way. Before Ted moves it, he will make all the preparations necessary to raise the wire at the pole. So he gets his body belt, hand line, and the tools and materials he'll need at the terminal pole. Ted uses his hand line to pull up drop wires wherever possible. But on jobs like this, where the drop is to cross a street or a highway, the hand line is a must. He lays the hand line over the drive hook, which has been placed high enough on the pole so that the drop wire will have the required clearance over the street and also adequate sag. He lowers the end of the hand line toward the building until it just touches the ground. It is particularly important that there be no excess length at this end of the hand line when the drop wire crosses the street, for later he will want to raise the wire as quickly as possible. As a precaution, both ends of the line are tied out of the way of cars and pedestrians, for Ted will have to leave the hand line unattended while he goes for his drop wire reel. He pays out enough slack so that the wire will rest flat on the ground as the reel is rolled to the street. As he waits for passing traffic, he checks again to be sure there's enough slack so the wire will lie flat as he rolls the reel across the street. He also checks to be sure the inner end of the coil is securely fastened. This will prevent the wire from slipping on the reel when it is raised at the terminal pole. If it slips, the breaking effect of the reel will be lost. Ted has planned his work carefully so that no unexpected hitch can occur to delay his pulling up the drop wire now that he's crossed the street. Notice that the reel is placed away from the street and so that the wire will pay off from the bottom. Having tied the hand line around the wire in a loop, all that remains to be done is to rewind excess slack on the reel, being careful not to raise the wire off the street. Set the drop wire reel brake Check again to be sure that all traffic is clear and raise the drop wire. The hand line is now last near the base of the pole and the entire raising operation has been completed quickly and safely. Fastening the wire to the pole attachment is done in the standard manner. Ted is careful to avoid injury to the wire covering. He provides as much sag as clearance conditions will permit. The hand line is not released until after the drop wire has been secured by the clamp. This is just common sense, for it prevents the wire from falling into the street 
if it should slip while being attached to the drop wire clamp. The work at the terminal is done with the precision and care that is characteristic of the good telephone installer. Now while Ted is connecting the drop wire at the terminal, let's take a moment to review the important steps that are necessary to the proper and safe installation of a drop wire when it must cross a street or highway. First, a check on traffic and other conditions to be sure that the job can be done safely without assistance. Then the location of the attachment on the house so as to provide both clearance and proper sag. Next, the preparations that will prevent delay.